Let's look at lesson one and unit four on quadratic functions and the transformations. A few vocabulary words to get out of the way. We know that the graph of a quadratic function is known as a parabola. And anytime you write a quadratic function in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we call that standard form for a quadratic function. And we have vertex form of a quadratic when we write that equation as y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. We know that h and k will give us the vertex of the parabola. The axis of symmetry passes through the x-coordinate of the parabola on the vertex. So when x equals h, we call that the axis of symmetry. It's a vertical line that divides the parabola into two mirror images. And then lastly, the vertex of the parabola is where we have the intersection of the parabola and its axis of symmetry. That's going to be located at the hk value. So let's jump into a little bit of visual vocabulary and use this graph of the parabola to sketch some of the key features. So if the vertex is located at hk, and the axis of symmetry passes through the vertex and divides the parabola in half, then we know that hk is the vertex. This point here, our y-intercept, that's the c value in standard form. And we have two zeros, one zero here and one over here. So we could say this is x sub one zero, and this other root is x sub two comma zero. So the axis of symmetry x equals h is the axis of symmetry through the middle, <clears throat> excuse me. And if I have some ordered pair here, an a and a b value, then we have the mirror reflection over here as the opposite of a and b. So let's jump into practicing with a little bit of graphing. In example one, we want to graph 2x squared, and 2x squared is going to have a vertex at 0, 0. If you want to substitute a point, let's say we did 2 times 1. If x was 1, then y would be 2. So we have the point 1, 2, and we know 0, 0 is our vertex. And we know the point 1, 2 is on our graph. So if we reflected that point, that would be the opposite of 1 and positive 2 over here. Then our axis of symmetry is through the middle, x equals 0. Now one trick I like is the 1, 3, 5 pattern. If you know that pattern from Algebra 1, a parabola will step up from the vertex, one up and one right, three up and one right, five up and one right, in an odd number pattern. But when our a value is two, we have to multiply the a value by the pattern one, three, five. So our a is two, and you can see here we stepped two up and one right and two up and one left. So the next one would step three up, but it's three times two, so that would be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the point two, eight would be on our graph, and you could check that. Two times two squared would be eight. And then the reflected point would also be on our graph, so negative two, positive eight would also be contained on the parabola. And there we filled up our grid with the reflected point 1, 2, and negative 1, 2, and our vertex of 0, 0. Now, if you would like to try example 2 on your own, you could turn off the video and come back to check your work. My vertex was at 0, 0. Again, the axis of symmetry is at 0.
And this time I substituted two, so two squared is four times a half would be two. And then the reflected point would be negative two, two. So this graph is going to be wider than our original graph. <clears throat> And it's going to look something like this. We have the reflected point 2, 2 and negative 2, 2. And if we substitute 4 into our function, 4 squared is 16. And 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I use the ordered pair 4, 8 and negative 4, 8. So just some basic graphs there. In our next two examples, we're going to see the effect of having a negative A value. So the negative on the A value is going to reflect our graph across the x-axis, and our function is going to go down to the right and down to the left in the odd pattern 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. The axis of symmetry is still x equals 0, and our point could be 2 and negative 4, and then negative 2 and negative 4. And you can see that here on our graph. In example 4, we're going to graph negative 2x squared, so it is also going to be stretched in that factor of 2, so the vertex is at 0, 0. x equals 0 is our vertical line that divides the graph in half. And we could have the point 2, negative 8. My graph paper doesn't go that far. And negative 2, negative 8, we could also use 1, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 2. So it's a vertically stretched parabola pointing down. Example 5 and 6, we'll see those translations when we move up and down the y-axis or left and right on the x-axis. So here our vertex is going to be located at 0, negative 2, since the minus 2 is going to shift our parabola two units down. So we have a vertex at 0, negative 2. Still, axis of symmetry is at 0. If you substitute 2 into your function, 4 minus 2 is 2. So we have 2, 2, and then we're going to reflect. Uh, I said 2, 2. We're going to reflect across the axis of symmetry, two units from that center line to the right would also reflect two units to the left. So negative 2, positive 2 is my reflected point, and our parabola <clears throat> looks like this. And how did the transformation occur from the parent function? Well, like we said, the y-coordinate, we have moved the y-coordinate of the vertex two units down. So we move the y-coordinate of the vertex from 0, 0 to 0, negative 2. So it moved, translated our parent two units down. In example six, we have the quadratic is squared in the x plus one. So if you think about vertex form as the x minus h quantity squared, our x equals h would be x equals negative one. So our axis of symmetry is going to be right here at negative one. So it will divide our parabola in half, and the parabola would sit at negative 1, 0 for the vertex. <clears throat> if you substitute 1 into our expression, 1 plus 1 squared gives us 4. So the point 1, 4 is our right half of the parabola. 
And if you reflect that line, that point 0.14 across the axis of symmetry two units, we're going to be located at negative 3, 4, since our axis of symmetry was shifted one unit to the left. So our reflected point is negative 3, 4. And we could put into words that we moved the x coordinate, the x coordinate of the vertex was moved one unit to the left. So here we want to write vertex form of the parabola off of our definition page, which was f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And if the a value is positive, then our parabola is going to open upward. hk is the vertex, and x minus h will translate the parabola to the right. So this translates right. If our a value is negative, then the parabola is going to open downward. x equals h, we said, is our axis of symmetry. And when we have x plus h, that's our translation of the vertex to the left. So here's a note that vertex form is the best form to use when we're graphing by a transformation method. Begin to develop a better understanding and recognize patterns or techniques that help us to graph quickly. The form also reveals behaviors of parabolas when you need to analyze the function completely. So in this last example, you need to grab a graphing calculator and discover the rules of the vertex form and then analyze the graph characteristics. So I hope you can see that x minus 2 quantity squared plus 3 is going to move the graph two units right and three units up, and our parabola is going to be up here. So the vertex, when we analyze, the vertex is located at two, three. This is a minimum value, and the parabola opens upward. If you like, you can also state the domain and the range. So here our domain is all reals and the range is from 3 inclusive up to infinity. How about letter B? So x plus 2 quantity squared minus 3 would shift our parabola two units left and three units down, but it's still going to open upward since our a value is positive. So we still have a minimum with the vertex at negative 2, negative 3. That vertex is a minimum value. The parabola opens upward. <laughs> the domain is all reals. And the range goes from negative 3 to positive infinity. <clears throat> okay, here we go with our last two examples. We want to graph y equals 2 times the quantity x plus 2 squared minus 3. The a value is 2, and the h value is x minus negative 2, and the k value is minus 3. So h 
is our axis of symmetry, x equals h. The vertex is the ordered pair h, k, negative 2, negative 3. I want to find a point, so I'm going to substitute 0 into the equation. And 2 times 0 plus 2 squared would be 2 times 4, that's 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So we want to think about the axis of symmetry divides our parabola in half. We know the low point or the vertex is at negative 2, negative 3. We know that's location. And we know the ordered pair 0, 5 is on our graph. So we want to reflect 0, 5, two units across the red vertical line, which puts our reflected point at negative 4, 5. And it's just that simple to graph a parabola. We need the vertex and we need one point and then reflect that one point across the axis of symmetry. So how could we describe the behavior of that graph? Well, we had a vertical stretch from the parent function. We shifted the graph of the vertex, the parent vertex. We moved the vertex two units left, three units down. The A value was 2. Since A was 2, this was a vertical stretch. And then we want to talk about the other characteristics of domain. So domain is all reals. The range goes from negative 3 upward infinitely, including negative 3. And we had a minimum value when y was negative 3. So this is my minimum value, negative 3. And then lastly, we want to be able to write a quadratic function given a graph. So let's think about how we could do that. We know the vertex is this point down here at negative 2, negative 6. So we know that important part, negative 2, negative 6. We know the point 0, 6 is on the graph. So next, we want to substitute values into that standard form, and we could solve for the a value. So let's think about that. If we have a is 3, whoop, oh, we don't know a yet. Let's think about how we can find that. So we know y is 6, and we don't know a, and x is 0, and h is negative 2, so minus 2, and then k is negative 6. So if we add 6 to this 6, we have 12, and 2 squared is 4, so a is 3. So now we know a is 3, and h is negative 2, k is negative 6, and we could write the equation. y equals a times x minus negative 2 squared minus 6. And the domain, again, is all reals. The range starts at negative 6 and goes upward. And our minimum value is the y-coordinate on the vertex that's negative 6. And we are finished with Lesson 1 in Chapter 4.